Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have a very fun video. It's a video I've been wanting to make for a while. <laughs> this is the assassin turned lover trope. So what I mean by assassin turned lover, I mean somebody who is out to unalive their love interest but then they fall in love with them instead, okay? Um, they're not all necessarily like assassins, like hired to kill them by other people, you know what I mean? I didn't know how to describe this trope. You know, like plan to kill you, but fell in love with you instead is pretty long. So that's why I said <laughs> assassin turned lover. They're basically like hates love, like enemies, like I hate you or hate your family or what you do. So I'm gonna try and kill you, but I fell in love with you instead, like, I love them. The one that I immediately think of when I think of this trope is Ivan by Sophie Lark because Sloane in here is literally hired to assassinate him. Ivan is a mafia boss and he's a Russian mafia boss. Many people have tried to unalive this mafia man and the only person that has ever come close is Sloane. She ended up infiltrating his house, infiltrating his room, literally standing over him in bed and almost kills him. And he is able to wake up in time to catch her in the act and basically locks her in the dungeon in his estate. And he wants to torture her and figure out who hired her to kill him. And how did this woman come the closest to unaliving him? It literally says on the back, she tried to kill me. Like she is hired by somebody to kill Ivan. She doesn't know why. Um, you have to figure out why when you read the book. And then it turns into Captor Captive, which is another one of my favorites. While we're on the topic of Sophie Lark, I do want to mention Stolen Air. <laughs> so Nico in here ends up kidnapping Nessa, who is the daughter to his mafia rival. He plans on kidnapping her, taking her back to his mansion, and at some point killing her because her family ended up killing his adoptive father. And he's like, I need retribution. I need to seek justice. So I'm gonna kill this girl. But when he kidnaps her and has her stay in his estate for a few days, um, he ends up becoming totally entranced by her and he hates it. He's like, how come I am falling for this girl? Like, I need to kill her at some point. Like, this is not okay. Revenge has fueled him for like years. And he is so mad at himself that he's finally at this point where he can act out his revenge and he can't do it because he has fallen in love with this woman. So Nessa in here is a, a dancer also. It's very Beauty and the Beast-esque. Like he's beauty, she's the beast. She's living in his creepy mansion with him. I love him because he just totally falls in love with this woman. He's, he was planning on killing. He's like, I can't do it. I cannot, I love Miko. Oh my gosh, probably the epitome of an enemy celebrity's romance is Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. The heroine in here, Sarah. Sarah literally analyzes Pestilence at the beginning of this book. So Pestilence is one of the four horsemen that have been cast down to end the world, essentially. So he is riding his plague horse throughout the whole world in the hopes of spreading plague and killing everyone. Um, and Sarah has been hearing about this and she's like, I'm gonna take one for the team and finally kill this guy. Like it needs to end, I'm gonna sacrifice myself and I'm just gonna do it. So she ends up setting this trap and ends up killing him, like blowing up, setting him on fire. But she doesn't know that Pestilence can't die. Like he regenerates and his ultimate goal in life, his one goal is to spread this plague, right? But after he dies, he has a second goal and that's to make the woman who killed him pay. He ends up kidnapping her and bringing her along on his journey of killing the human race. Like, <laughs> and he's gonna torture her and maim her throughout the whole entire thing. Like he hates her. He's like, I'm gonna make this woman pay for killing me. I'm gonna try and kill her right back. Like I'm gonna make her suffer. Like, like it's a lot. This book is dark at times. She's literally watching Pestilence kill the human race right in front of her. But then she's also falling in love with this guy at the same time. Like he's slowly becoming more human the more that they spend time together. And she is like mortified with herself that she's falling in love with this guy who's killing a bunch of people, but she, she, she cannot help herself, so. I love it. Ooh, one that I love that is so underhyped is Mating the Huntress by Talia Hibbert. This is like a paranormal werewolf werewolf shifter romance. Chastity in here uh, works at her family's, I think like coffee shop if I'm not mistaken. And there's this guy named Luke that has been sitting and coming in um, to the coffee shop like almost every day for the past like week or so. Like I said, his name is Luke and he went to the coffee shop a little bit ago and was able to scent his faded mate and he realizes that Chastity is his faded mate, but they don't know each other. He wants to introduce himself. He's really nervous and shy and doesn't know how to like ask this girl out. He wants to ask her out. So he finally gets up enough nerve to ask her out 
And Chastity says yes, and he's very excited. He's like, okay, we have a date plan for tonight. Come to my place, I'm very excited. He doesn't know that Chastity knows all about werewolf shifters already because she comes from a family of werewolf hunters. So Chastity has never killed a werewolf. So she says yes to Luke's a date because she knows the moment that he walks in the door like that's a werewolf and she sees this date as the perfect opportunity to finally kill her first werewolf so on their first date she tries to unalive him and he falls even more in love with her because of it he's like oh my gosh this woman is so strong and so amazing she's literally trying to kill me like i'm smitten like <laughs> i love luke he is so <laughs> cute and i really really love this paranormal romance queen takes rose by katie robert is another one in this trope this is a sapphic romance that's a retelling of kind of like sleeping beauty it's not really a t retelling of sleeping beauty the tale it's basically aurora and maleficent getting together if that makes sense so um aurora works at this club and i think she gets like auctioned off to malone who is our maleficent character malone like pays her a large sum for her to be hers for like two weeks and do whatever she says and Aurora agrees because she's gonna seek out revenge because she believes that Malone is responsible for the death of her family so she is going to seek revenge on her family's death while staying with Malone she sees this as the perfect opportunity to get justice basically um, but then when she's staying with her she's up falling in love with her obviously that's what happens with all of these books <laughs> but if you want a hot sapphic read that's a retelling i definitely recommend this one. Ooh, one that i love too is a monster romance this is his darkest craving by tiffany roberts it's a short read but it is so good this one's about cruz and sophie sophie is our human woman and um she is a writer and she rents out a cabin at the edge of these very mysterious looking woods kind of creepy looking woods and she's gonna basically do like a writing vacation I'm gonna spend time writing in this cabin. Sophie doesn't know that these woods have a protector of sorts and it's Cruz who is this shadow entity you can see on the cover. This is also Cruz in his like physical form. He could only get in his physical form like once a year I think on Halloween. Anyway, so he looks like this most of the time. It's like shadow creature entity thing. Anyway, he unalives like basically every single human that comes into his woods because he's there to protect them. Um, and he has uh, his sights set on doing that to Sophie uh, because she is very mysterious about the woods. So he ends up like, he's a shadow entity. So he sneaks into her house while she's asleep, is literally looming over her about to kill her. He can't do it. Like he can't, he's like, why can't I do it? I hate humans. Why can't I? this one like what is going on he becomes fascinated by her is watching her all the time she feels like someone's watching her and she's going like kind of insane she's like i feel like something's watching me and when cruz finally makes himself known to sophie like it's hot it's it's so good like you wouldn't think that a shadow entity and a human together would be hot but oh my gosh it is it does not disappoint. <laughs> a fantasy romance one that I will recommend to the end of days is A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mie Levine. Maddox in here is a barbarian warrior essentially in this fantasy realm and his parents were just murdered. And there's this rumor going around that Yven, who is the daughter of a neighboring kingdom's king, is responsible for their deaths. So he's gonna go get revenge basically, go and kill her. He wants to kill her really bad. But Yven ends up finding him first instead and tells him like, I swear I was not responsible for your family's death. It was my father and I know the perfect way to get revenge on him and that's to get married and take his throne, basically. Maddox doesn't really like believe Yven was not responsible for his parents' deaths, but he still finds her plan to be a genius, essentially. He's gonna take the guy's throne. And so this is a journey about them getting married and being married to each other and then traveling to her father's kingdom to overtake it, basically. This is hate to love to the max. Like he hates this woman, hates her. There's some hate doing it scenes, okay? There are, like he hates her, but he's also obsessed with her at the same time. Like he cannot stop thinking about her, can't stop being around her, like he is utterly entranced by her. But he definitely wanted to unalive her when they first met. He's planning on it and he's still even planning on it when they get married. He's like, I'm gonna do away with this woman once I get my crown. Another fantasy romance is The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen. Our heroine in here has been trained her whole entire life to be the perfect wife but also perfect assassin because the king of her realm who's her dad um, ends up having a bunch of daughters and is training all of them to marry the neighboring kingdoms king are in one day the heroine gets chosen to do this or gets the job to do this and she ends up marrying king Arryn. she's 
going to go there to be a spy to get information about their kingdom but once she gets there she realizes maybe like her father was hiding some things about both of their kingdoms that she never knew about and maybe what she's doing is completely wrong um but she can't help but also fall in love with her target like she is falling for rn and then she also is learning that he's not responsible for the things that her dad said like there's a lot going in here a lot of secret keeping but a great fantasy romance this is like uh, a whole series the bridge kingdom is a whole entire series but books one and book two follow the same couple and then three and four follow one couple and then it goes on you know what i mean so like this ends on kind of a cliffhanger but you just gotta read book two you can listen to book one and book two on audible if you have an audible membership for free so go ahead and do that i totally recommend then i have kingdom fall by a zavarelli this is a mafia romance and i'll keep this one short and sweet because there's a lot that can be spoiled with this book, but our heroine ends up being hired to be the nanny for this mafia boss's son that he has. Um, the heroine was injured, she's not able to speak, so she communicates by writing things down or signing. Um, and she's also teaching the little boy how to sign, which I loved. Um, the little boy feels very lonely in this house, so I love how they were able to form such a connection. But yes, this is a mafia romance. He is very grumpy and gruff and mean. Okay, the hero can be mean. So, <laughs> um, but if you want like a darker read, you can totally pick this one up. There is a main character in here, either the hero or the heroine, who wants to unalive the other. And I'm not gonna tell you who, cause that's a spoiler. So I'll leave it at that, but a great, great read. And the last one that I have is Asterion, Asteron? Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. I think this is like a retelling of the mythological tale, like the labyrinth, where there's like the minotaur guarding the labyrinth, right? Yeah. Um, so our heroine in here is hired to be an assassin and to assassinate this guy. She ends up getting with him, killing him in his bed. Um, but she has no idea what she signed up for though, because the guy ends up shifting into a minotaur and wants revenge on the woman who tried to kill him because he didn't actually die. She didn't want to kill Asteron, but like her uh, boss, because she is a hired assassin, her boss um, did something to her sister and she wants revenge, but she's also indebted to him. So I think he said like, if you kill this guy, I'll let you go free. And so she's like, this is finally my ticket out of here. But then Asteron takes her to get revenge on what she did. So if you want a more paranormal read with like mythological aspects to it, I definitely recommend this one. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romances with the assassin turned lover trope. Leave your recommendations below. I would love, love them a lot, okay? Also let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any dancing related emoji down below because Nessa in here from Stolen Air is a dancer. So anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.